Time signature, backbeat, meter, subdivision, cycle, grouping, dotted eighth note, metric modulation, accent, triplet, seven eight, eight seven, numbers, <laughs> What is a time signature? How do you find it and what does it mean? How many versions of subdivision are there? And why is the Gnawa Clavis so cool? I use these terms a lot. So just to make sure that everyone's on the same page, I'm gonna go back a bit and redefine all these terms so we all know what I'm talking about. But remember, music theory and perception varies between cultures, experience, and genre. So this video and this explanation will be reflecting my personal style through the Yogev Gabay lens. I'm a drummer and I play certain styles but not all styles. I'm sure that if I was a bass player or an upright bass player playing Latin music or classical music, this video would be very, very different. So, what is a time signature? A time signature, which I'll also refer to as a meter or rhythmic cycle, is the total amount of equal beats within a singular bar. The time signature is the backbone of the rhythmic aspect of the song and one of its most fundamental building blocks. It helps dictating how a piece will move and how it feels, though there are other factors that contribute to this as well, like harmony and melody, but I have no authority discussing those because, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a drummer. So, time signature. Let's compare it to a mosaic. The first thing I need to know, if I was a mosaic artist, a mosaic-kishan, a mosaic mosaicer, whatever, will be the physical space I have to work with, right? So the dimensions of my canvas. Is it a huge floor? Is it a small decoration on a wall? Once I know the context, all the other aspects of my creation will adhere to that context and I can get a clearer feeling of the piece. So the time signature is my workspace. Remember this analogy. I'll be using it for the subdivision video next week. In Western music, a time signature is represented by two numbers. The top number tells us how many beats we have. Or practically speaking, where do you count to? And the lower number tells us which note value they represent. Before we talk about note value, I have to add one thing. A time signature is not a fraction. If we see a 7-8 bar, that doesn't mean we're missing an eighth note in order to make it full. It means that this is a full standalone bar that happens to have seven equal beats in it. You got it? I mean, even if you, God forbid, see this line written, just know it's not a fraction. Let's talk about note values. A long time ago, some fine gentlemen or ladies or both, whatever, some smart people came up with a note value table that we still use today. Thanks for that, by the way. We start off with a whole note. A whole note equals two half notes. Each half note equals two quarter notes. Each quarter note equals two eighth notes and each eighth note equals two sixteen notes. Okay, so remember the two numbers we had? This one means we have three main beats in a bar, so when we count, we count till three. And this one means we refer to those main beats as quarter notes. I'll often refer to these as main beats. Same thing goes with different numbers, obviously. Here, for example, we have six beats, which are an eighth note each, in one bar. And here we have 11 beats, which are a 16 note each, in one bar. So basically, how much of what? We also have odd time signatures. And they're called odd, not because they're weird or something, but because they have an odd number of beats in a bar. So all those fives, sevens, nines, etc. These time signatures usually require an additional piece of information, which is the way those beats are divided within the bar. For example, a 7-8 bar, 7 beats per bar and each beat is an eighth note long, can be divided into 3-2-2 two, two, or 2-2-3 two, two, or 2-3-2, two, two, 
And this is vital information to know as it sets up the dance of that particular time signature. These meters will be divided into groups of threes and twos. A cool anecdote. The bottom number of the time signature only became relevant once musicians and composers started communicating through a written medium, so like scores and sheet music. In oral musical traditions, for example, Indian music, the musicians refer to the time signature as a singular number, so 7 instead of 7-8, or 6 instead of 6-4. So instead of hearing something like, this piece is in 5-4, you'll hear something like, this piece is in a 5-beat cycle in this tempo. Speaking of tempo, tempo is another thing we have to consider when talking about time signatures. We use beats per minute, or BPM, for that, as a reference for how fast those main beats occur. But this gets tricky as well. Think about this. This is a 4-beat cycle. How would you decide if to call these quarter notes, eighth notes, or half notes? I can write it as quarter notes in 120 beats per minute, I can write it as 8th notes in 60 beats per minute. Or I can write it as half notes in 240 beats per minute. These are all mathematically correct, but they all convey a different vibe. I'll give you an example. When I went to Berkeley, I was a part of this ensemble with this guy, an amazing saxophone player called Samuel Batista. He brought in a piece one day that was in 4-4 with a bunch of syncopated 16 notes, but the BPM was around 30 or 40, so ridiculously slow. I don't remember the rhythms exactly. But I remember thinking, okay, I'll just think about all this in double time, which would obviously make my playing gravitate towards a faster pulse. Now, let's say the rhythms were ta, ka ta ka ta, 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 ta. I played it in this way. Samuel, he told us that no, 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 don't think about it in that way. He wants to have that struggling feeling of the slower tempo. So think about it this way. Ta, ka ta ka ta, 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 ta. Did you feel that struggle, that backwards pull? That's an emotional thing that he wanted for the piece. And he wrote it that way specifically because of this. This is a very cool use of time signature psychology. The last factor that comes into play is genre. A side effect of the way Western music has developed is the fact that certain time signatures and time-related nuances were embedded into different musical genres and cultures. For example, the strongest beat in a 4-4 rock or pop song will be beat 1. While in jazz and some kinds of reggae, the strong beats will be 2 and 4. A 6-8 blues groove would feel very different from a 6-8 gnawa groove. but they're both called 6-8. A jazz drummer might prefer reading this rhythm as eighth notes in a higher tempo, One, two, three. while a metal drummer may prefer reading the same rhythm as 16 notes in half the tempo. Or just not reading at all, but sure.
The awareness of these stylistic differences between genres can also help you when you're looking for what a time signature is. So if you know what the genre is, generally speaking, you can narrow down the time signature options that you have, generally speaking. Usually the drums or percussion would disclose what the time signature is pretty bluntly. But sometimes you have songs with either no drums or percussion, or you have styles that the drums and percussion play some intricate parts or just more involved parts, and it's kind of confusing. In these cases, I just wait and listen for like a, I don't know, melody line, a vocal line, some theme that would give me more clues about the time signature. I analyzed a song like this a few weeks ago, a porcupine tree song. The link is down below. Next week, I'll discuss subdivisions and their manipulation. But don't worry, I'll return breaking down weird songs right after. Thanks for watching. 